Hello and welcome one and all. We've made this video because we've just been around the Cheshire Ring and then we went up the Rochdale Nine. You don't be rude! <laughs> I know, they're awful, aren't they? Some of you have been wondering what the heck is he talking about? Well, the Rochdale Nine are nine locks that are constructed through the centre of Manchester to link the Bridgewater Canal to the existing Rochdale Canal. As we trace the route, you'll see red lines where there were arms which used to service mills and warehouses along the way. They were gradually filled in over time. Before the link was built, the Rochdale Canal would terminate at Piccadilly Basin, Dale Street. This map's upside down, so I'll spin it around and you can see there were some old stores. There's also lots of arms that went into the buildings around the basin. Hold on, this sounds like I've selected a track from Titanic. One second. Ah, that's better. So the canal stopped here for many years because the Duke of Bridgewater didn't agree to the canal linking his. He had been responsible for building the Bridgewater Canal, which is considered the first true canal in Britain. The Piccadilly Basin is quite a bit smaller than it was, but there's still quite a lot of bits left. Let's take a look. The smaller white building is the Rochdale Canal Company office. To the right of that is a secure warehouse where boats would go in to get unloaded. They'd go in through two arches at the bottom there. So after having a good dig online, I couldn't find many pictures of the Piccadilly Basin in its time, but I did manage to find one and decipher it. Take a look at the white building here and keep your eye on that. So here's the white building you saw, and then that's the secure warehouse next door to it. Here's the stores that we saw on the map, and they were next to the existing lock at Piccadilly Basin in blue. So on this map coming up, you'll see the stores and you'll see the canal used to go around the back of it. But in this grey area here, this is where it was filled in in this picture. So looking from above, we'll pan across the yard. So the drone's flying here on the corner wall of what was the stores. So Piccadilly Basin was the terminus of the Rochdale Canal for quite a few years because the Duke of Bridgewater didn't want to allow it to go any further. But that's not where the story ends. When proposals are made to extend the Manchester, Bolton and Bury Canal past Rochdale and onto Sladen and then onto Sowerby Bridge, he bricked it and backed down. The Duke realised the Trans-Pennine route would bypass his canal and lose him a shitload of money. So graciously, he let them construct the link. As a condition for allowing the Rochdale link to be built, he insisted his own workers construct the final lock linking onto the Bridgewater. This was so he alone maintained control of the lock which is still known as Duke's Lock. So before we go into detail on the Rochdale Nine, let's head back to the Bridgewater and take a look at some of the industry en route which sparked the Industrial Revolution. So looking at side-by-side -side maps to get some bearings, uh, there's Media City and the uh, Salford Docks. We're chuckling along on the Bridgewater about here. So going under the railway bridge, we'll cut to Britain from above. You can see the railway line there on the left, and we're heading through all the industrial area to the right. It's amazing to see how many mills there were. Look to the right of them, you can see the workers' cottages. Yes, 
You'll see as the video goes on, Manchester wasn't made for restaurants shopping and strutting, it was built for industry and this was the reason so many people lived here, some in pretty awful conditions. This era was brought about by coal, steam and mass production. So what industry was there? Let's take a look down this first spur. Keep your eye on the left hand map. So on the left there is Hume Sawmills and on the right there's Excelsior Printing Works. That had a capacity for 750 employees, it was one of the largest of its kind, it opened in 1870. Looking at the precarious position of this chap here, it was also the place of the first death by printing press. Only kidding. So moving on from the print works, we're going to go to Hume Hall Bridge and its construction. The picture's taken from here, and the photographer's looking in that direction, all the way over there. Spot the two photo bombers across the way. Continuing on under the bridge to the next spur. So there's the arm, and on the left as you went in, there was a cotton mill. And then there was Britannia Emery Mills, which manufactured glass emery cloths, sandpapers, and also knife polish. Then there were Talbot Mills, which was a textile company. In fact, everywhere around Manchester was mills, mills, mills. And they say we've got pollution problems nowadays. So the last mill to highlight is the Worsley Mill also known as the Canal Flour Mill, which was a steam-powered corn mill built in 1894, and it's now some swanky apartments. So that's a sample of the industry that was on the canals and the reason they needed to build the Rochdale 9. So here's Duke's Lock, that's the start of the flight. When it was first constructed, the area between this lock and the next ran in a shallow tunnel beneath the Duke of Bridgewater's field. Most of this was opened up later, except for a short section at Deansgate. You have to bear in mind, this was constructed around 1800 and the railway lines won't have been there. They didn't come till about 1830. We couldn't see any remnants of the tunnel, just the uh, stone that it was carved into. So heading back to the Duke's Lock, we're going to have a look at some of the unusual lock gear that's there. Because they're built in quite a confined area, the lock arms are really short, so they've ended up putting mechanical winches to open the gates. From my recollection, there's three sets of locks on the flight that have got this mechanism on them. So let's have a look at some of the places that were alongside the Rochdale 9 flight. On the left is a precarious timber yard and some warehouses. Now I'm trying to work out what's going on with the building ahead of us. It's not the one we can see in the picture here, but it might be the one that's slightly tucked behind with a new facade. The rest of the building behind that was demolished. We'll head past it on the boat shortly. You can see where it's stitched into the building next door. If you're heading past there, take a look at the right hand side at the bottom, there's a doorway. I think it's a doorway, it's too narrow for a fireplace. So looking onto the right here, they left the stair tower after demolition and the chimney. I wonder if this is because it may have fallen on the train track. If anyone knows why it's left or what they're going to do with the land, drop a comment. So moving on under this railway bridge and on towards Deansgate Tunnel, there's a picture we've got from the footpath on the right hand side, which is of Deansgate Tunnel before it was reconstructed in the 1900s. You can see the ramp there on the right hand side which would take footfall up and over the tunnel. This is an aerial shot of trains going over that bridge that we were just underneath. 
and to the right there that's the Bridgewater Canal. So let's take a look at a map. You can see the demolished warehouse there on the left and then as you go through the railway bridge and on the left there's what appears to be a disused arm but it's not an arm of the Rochdale. It's the top part of a tunnel that predates the Rochdale. So this is where we are on the map. So the Bridgewater Canal used to stand alone and was used to bring cheap coal in from the mines at Worsley and distribute around Manchester. Goods would be brought in and unloaded at the grocer's warehouse here. So here's an aerial shot of the grocer's warehouse and the tunnel that's attached to it. Goods being dropped off by boat would enter the warehouse via two arches. Goods would come in and they'd be lifted to street level by a water-powered crane designed by James Brindley. This is a replica of the water wheel that powered it. Unfortunately they knocked down the grocer's warehouse in the 60s but in hindsight they decided to rebuild it. So the lucky barges that entered this tunnel would not only be emptied from above, they would continue on on another journey. They would head into a tunnel to be unloaded at another street. Sadly no more, the Rochdale ruined that. You can see there where the Rochdale was built across the tunnel. So looking onwards along the route of the tunnel, you gotta bear in mind the train line wasn't there when this tunnel was built. When the Rochdale 9 was built into this bedrock, this area here was excavated to build the yard that you see on the left hand side of this picture. I know you're all itching to know, where did the tunnel go? Let's take a look at the maps. So the tunnel goes from the grocer's warehouse, through the Rochdale before it was built, under the train lines before they were built, under Bridgewater Street, and then ended up here. We know this because a shaft was found here in 2007 during construction and I'm presuming that's why they didn't build on that spot. So here's the oldest map I could find with the grocer's warehouse and the entry point there. And this is the tunnel here according to the map, which at this point in time would have been built over by the Rochdale Canal and the area excavated for a coal yard. At the side of the coal yard you can see the grocer's yard and stables but the tunnel continued on from there. We'll follow the trajectory of the bit of map we have here which shows the tunnel. The 2007 excavation said they found a shaft there. At the point in time of this map, the end of the tunnel's under private housing, but originally it opened out into a warehouse and the coal was stored in a yard. Hope you've enjoyed part one of our video on the Rochdale 9. Next time we're going to have a look at the reconstruction of the Deansgate Tunnel and some abandoned arms. But let's leave it with this photo blender.